you always known that you're on a soul path? And have you wondered how to gain real insight into the steps along your own unique journey? Welcome everyone, I'm Sarah Main, and thank you for joining me on Dhammayanti, the show for your soul. It's great to have you join me. Dhammayanti means deep peace and calm. Dhammayanti sheds a light for your soul through the gift of wisdom that shines in the beautiful and universal language of Sanskrit. Dhammayanti is the show that speaks to your soul, connects with your soul and enriches your soul. Welcome everyone. Welcome along. It's great to have you here. Welcome to Dhammayanti, the show for your soul with me, Sarah Main. And today I want to talk about growing in wisdom, grow in wisdom rather than gather more information. I don't know if you've actually stopped to consider the differences between wisdom and information and the world that we live in, but um, we we live in quite a, a busy, a full information world. It's called the information age. Um, and that sounds fantastic. I mean, people can be very proud of that. We live in this information age, right? It sounds really sophisticated, kind of shiny, techy, moving ahead. It's instant. Um, but there have been other periods of time in history that are the age of something else but this time it's the age of information and I mean quite frankly we are literally bombarded with an avalanche of information every day Uh, even from when I was growing up to now if you want to know something like how to do this how to do that all you need to do is pick up your smartphone uh, do a quick uh, search, internet search, an image search, whatever you're after, and the information is there. Whether or not it's actually accurate is another matter. Um, of course, there's dubious quality to a lot of it because there is so much. The proliferation is so vast. Um, the quality is under question. However, let's just broadly sweep it all up as information and it is, we're just marinated in it. It's an avalanche. We're being bombarded. It's a torrent. Um, and with all the information, it promotes constant analysis and dissection. I mean, constant, everything. It's a characteristic of the modern world in which we live. It's a characteristic of a lot of modern education is this real emphasis is constant overemphasis almost on analytical approaches analysis of course there's a place for that of course but if that's all you do like you can't do anything or see anything or experience anything without this constant analysis this overlay of analysis which is only one function of the mind then that's the sort of energy Uh, That's the level of consciousness at which we often dwell. Um, And quite frankly, on a day-to-day basis without being aware of it, that's really what's going on. So with that said, let's consider now wisdom. What about wisdom? I mean, what is wisdom? Have you stopped to consider it? Just let's do yourself a favour. Just consider. Let's let this show, let this time with me and time together be a time of consideration, of pondering, of reflection about things like this, growing in wisdom rather than gathering information. What about wisdom? What is wisdom? What is information? What's the nature of wisdom and what's the nature of information? Now, have you stopped to think about that? And what place does wisdom have in our fast-paced information-driven tech-driven ever-changing world what place does wisdom have in that does it have a place do you see it has a place so let's use this facility that we have for consideration and let's use it to good use let's put it to good use So 
also stop for a moment and consider, is it time to grow in wisdom? Do you feel that? Grow in wisdom rather than gather more information. So this is what a few people have said about things. And, and I, I picked these because they have a certain energy about them that is coming from wisdom. It's coming from experience. Okay, listen to this one. Instead of buying your children all the things you never had, you should teach them all the things you were never taught. Material wears out, but knowledge stays. Instead of buying your children all the things you never had, you should teach them all the things you were never taught. Material wears out, but knowledge stays. So that was Bruce Lee. And then this one, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. And that's the famous Viktor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning. Everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. And then this, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. So, of course, that's the famous opening lines of the serenity prayer. There's, it goes on, of course, but there, there, that's the classic opening lines. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. So there are three statements already that just um, ooze a certain energy that are just resonate with this energy of wisdom. You're not gathering information from that. There's not something you can grasp onto or dissect, as it were, you just, something in you goes, yes, something knows that there's a truth in that, that it's wise. There's a certain calmness that comes with that. Notice the difference in the energy. And then I found these, which I thought I really liked. This is from, um, well, Calvin Coolidge. He's a 30th president, a US president. Nothing in the world can take place without persistence nothing in the world sorry i misread that nothing in the world can take the place of persistence nothing in the world can take the place of persistence now someone making that statement that's born of their own experience they know that they know it like they know their own name they don't have to think about it that's the, that's the thing about wisdom. You just know it deep within yourself. You don't have to think about it. And then don't expect to build up the weak by pulling down the strong. Don't expect to build up the weak by pulling down the strong. Calvin Coolidge also said that. Great experience behind both those uh, statements. So wisdom. Okay, well, let's just look at the English word wisdom. What does it mean? Have you ever looked it up? In uh, Merriam-Webster Dictionary, it means, they say it means insight, the ability to discern inequalities in relationships, wisdom. Wisdom, an aspect, is judgment, as in good sense, having the judgment, uh, good sense of judgment. Um, wisdom, a wise attitude, belief or course of action, and also the teachings of ancient wise men. That's how Merriam-Webster describes wisdom. And the Cambridge Dictionary says the ability to use your knowledge and experience to make good decisions and judgments. Okay. And then what of information? So just take all of that, wisdom, that's the English, some, some English definitions of wisdom. And then information, as distinct from wisdom, information, Merriam-Webster says, knowledge obtained from investigation, study or instruction. Already that's different, isn't it? And the communication or reception of knowledge or intelligence. 
And Cambridge Dictionary says the facts about a situation, the facts about a person or event. So facts, facts about a situation, person or event. So different from the ability to use your knowledge and experience to make good decisions and judgments, information is facts about a situation, person or event. Okay. And then going on to the Sanskrit, let's get even deeper. Let's go more to the essential knowledge. <clears throat> the Sanskrit dictionary has some definitions, has different words typically. It includes information, but one word for wisdom in Sanskrit is jnana, <clears throat> um, and that means knowing, becoming acquainted with knowledge, especially the higher knowledge derived from the meditation on the one universal spirit. That's jnana. So that has quite a broad, deeper understanding of knowledge. And you can see there's a distinction between information and knowledge. And then there's another Sanskrit word, uh, viveka or viveka, discrimination and distinction, consideration, discussion, investigation, true knowledge, discretion, right judgment, the faculty of distinguishing and classifying things according to their real properties, the power of separating the invisible spirit from the visible world or spirit from matter, truth from untruth, reality from mere illusion. So that's Viveka. This is all under the banner in Sanskrit of wisdom, <clears throat> different aspects. And then the last one is Prajna. Prajna is wisdom, intelligence and knowledge, discrimination and judgment. Um, and Prajna is actually a feminine word and it also can mean a clever or sensible woman. Um, and it's true or transcendental wisdom, prajna. So that's a different aspect altogether. Um, and that takes in from the ordinary right through to the transcendent. So following on about wisdom, just I'm starting to consider experience um, the nature of wisdom. Let's look at some, let's hear some um statements from the Upanishads. This is higher wisdom altogether. The uh, One of the Upanishads says, like the butter hidden in milk, the pure consciousness resides in every being that ought to be constantly churned out by the rod of the mind. And then there's another statement of wisdom. I mean, all the Upanishads are wisdom. You are what your deep driving desire is as your desire is so is your will as your will is so is your deed and as your deed is so is your destiny so I could keep reading these there's so much knowledge and information from the various wisdom traditions and it's all easily available these days there's books online there's talks there's social media there's retreats and it goes on but um you know that's really at the level of knowledge and information and you need that that's the starting point and most of the information we encounter is related to the ordinary world you know we're looking up how to do something where to go you know your map tells you what to do we're analyzing this is it better to do this should I do that what time what's a good time to leave all of this sort of thing the the issue with information is that this can change and does change and particularly as further details come to hand there's more research they discover something was wrong or there's another aspect to it that's the nature of information it is based on duality good bad pleasant unpleasant past future here there um, right wrong all that sort of thing and that's the nature of information at the level of our worldly manifest experience the ordinary world um, and this sort of information we can accumulate all right and it can be complex and it can be hard some of it duality is the nature of the manifest world and it's constantly moving and changing but to grow in wisdom we need to learn from the wisdom traditions from the scriptures from the wise from a wise teacher our parents our grandparents a mentor we need to grow in wisdom so we're going to stop for a break now and after the break i'm going to come back and talk more about learning the knowledge and then applying it because that's how we take knowledge and then 
transform it into wisdom so it becomes part of us. So I'll see you soon after the break. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to Damayanti, the show for your soul. And today we're talking about growing in wisdom rather than gathering more information. And um, for the break, I was just <clears throat> opening up the consideration of the nature of wisdom and the nature of information and how we live in an information age. Great on one level, but the problem with that is it can block us off to the to wisdom. And wisdom connects us to a much deeper realm of consciousness and, in fact, connects us to ourselves, our true self. Um, information just simply cannot do that. It's not of that level at all. And um, <clears throat> considering the nature of wisdom, you can think about it, um, but you really sort of experience it. You feel it. You just go, oh, yeah, you know, there's a truth about it that you just know is is true um and i read a whole lot of quotes um some of my favorites just you know have this sort of wisdom about them they're all sort of coming from different life experiences and yet they just have this singularity of this sense of wisdom no and it connects you with yourself um and this is one you are what your deep driving desire is as your desire is, so is your will. As your will is, so is your deed. And as your deed is, so is your destiny. So we're talking about growing in wisdom. Um, and to that, we do need to learn from the wisdom traditions, from the scriptures, from the wise, a wise teacher, our parents, our grandparents, if you have the good fortune to um, have met them or be in touch with them now, um, or you know, even hear something that they used to say connects you with that wisdom um, or a mentor, any, you know, some connection. Uh, and then you hear you need to learn the knowledge. And that is how it is with uh, we humans. We need to hear the knowledge. And once we've heard it, it makes it available to us. It's like it, it turns the light on. It opens the door. The knowledge is there, but it's like it's latent or dormant. Once we hear it, it makes it available. And it's just how the system works within us as humans. We, we actually do need to hear the knowledge. But we must first hear it, right? That's, that's just how it is. That's just how it works. And then once we've heard it, the, the next step, and this is a crucial step, is we need to apply it. We need to practice it. And from that application in the real world, in our lives, and that practice, we gain experience and we gain understanding. We see what's true. We see what's untrue. There's a sifting going on. Think of the Sanskrit, the Viveka. We, we are seeing what's true from untrue. And we only know that. We only see that through our own experience, our own application. And then that's how we gain in that we gain the experience and the understanding, and that's how we grow in wisdom through that understanding and that experience. So without the application, so we need to hear the knowledge first, then we need to apply it. Just without any preferences one way or the other, we need to apply, apply it and see how it works, whether it works. Um, it's a real sort of investigative uh, process. And then we just somehow know within our own experience. We don't have to think about it. We just know, okay? And that wisdom that we gain, that wisdom and understanding doesn't change. It's not like information, you know, that over time can change and often does change. This wisdom doesn't change. It deepens. It often simplifies because that's unfortunately the nature of information is it can be complex and hard, whereas the nature of wisdom is in the end it's simple. It's immediate. 
Um, it transcends time because it's applicable all the time. You know, there's never a, a time not for the wisdom to be relevant. Have you noticed that no matter what situation you're in, if you you just know something, it goes across all situations, all time. So that is the very definition of universal. Universal is um, available, present, applicable, relevant, true, all times, all places. If that's not the case, then it's not universal by definition. So wisdom doesn't change. It deepens. It, and it simplifies. In that deepening, it simplifies. It becomes more essential. You know, when you distill something down into its essence, that's what we mean by becoming more essential, the very essence of it. But remember, fundamentally, wisdom doesn't change. It is timeless. And this is the nature of wisdom. And wisdom is not of the level of the thinking mind. Wisdom's beyond that. It's still, it's unmoved. It's, um, it can often be expressed as a few simple universal principles that you've come to realise um, rather than a multitude of constantly changing rules and bits and pieces of information. These few simple principles are the, the best things that you know and you have. They're the real value that, and the treasure, okay? And with wisdom and understanding, fewer words are needed. You just you don't need them all. And no one owns wisdom, all right? You can't trademark wisdom. It, it's just known. Um, one example that's very dear to me is on my father's um, 70th birthday, I just, I remember sitting down and saying, you know, after we wish him a happy birthday and all that, I said, well, Dad, um, you know, what have you, you're 70, what have you learned in 70 years? And he said, oh, he said, that's easy. Two things. I'm not moved anymore. I don't get disturbed by what's happening anymore. And he said, that was one. And that, to me, sounded amazing. And then he said, and the reason is, because everything goes around in cycles. It's, you know, it just will keep coming around. And he said, so what's happening now has happened before and I've seen it all before and it really does go around in cycles. So there's no need to be agitated anymore. You can be still and undisturbed. Now that's wisdom. That is experience. And you can take that and use that as a guiding principle that there's no need to be agitated and disturbed, you know, because we're bombarded by all this information and, and fear this and scare that and, you know, anxious this and whatever, nervous that. You don't need to be. That's the wisdom of someone who's lived 70 years and has seen a lot of things and lived a lot of um, life experiences. So the example of... of um, Applying true knowledge um, leads to greater understanding and another really, and a growth in wisdom. Another example I love is a parent I knew. Um, she had three kids and she was a psychologist by training and had a, had a busy psychology practice and her expertise was in um, family relationships. So she ran a counselling psychology practice and she did family relationships and relationships in general, but particularly family relationships. And um, she had started um, learning about mindfulness and awareness and presence and, in fact, some simple meditation practices. And I've talked about that this in previous shows. And so she was beginning to early days of practicing this mindfulness and awareness and presence and remembering to be still and present. And there was a situation one morning where the kids were running late and someone was picking the kids up to drive them to school, a friend, right? The kids at the same school. So they were, do, they were doing the drop school drop off. And I think she was going to pick them all up in the afternoon. And, you know, there was some issue right at the crucial time where they were getting their shoes and their bags and having to run up the driveway to get in the car. And she didn't want the, them to delay this friend, fellow parent. Anyway, 
she at that moment you know she could see herself getting all tense and all oh, the timing and she's got to deal with this issue with a couple of kids or one of the kids anyway she was blessed with this memory because she had started practicing this mindfulness and awareness and presence she was blessed in that moment to just remember to fall still be present come into the present moment drop any idea of the push and all the agitation and she just met the child and met the situation in the present moment. There was all the time in the world. The knowledge was there. She was completely calm. The whole situation was resolved so simply in that present moment. Her energy wasn't depleted. The child was happy. There was complete unity, understanding, clarity, respect. She heard the child, honoured the child. It gave her a whole new perspective. And this is a you know, well-trained psychologist, right, um, a whole new perspective on the situation and how to deal with relationships. And it was a total game changer and she changed her whole professional relationship and counselling work and based it all on dealing with family relationships and so on from the basis of mindfulness and presence and bringing that in. And so that informed her whole practice, changed everything and that being the most effective way to resolution. And, you know, that is powerful. That is wisdom that she gained and growing in wisdom in a simple situation, daily situation, dealing with the children, running to get a lift to school, right? So that is the power of true knowledge applied in the moment. It is totally transformative. So I have, you know, Lots and lots and lots more things to say, but, you know, all I can say is the best place to start is by this simple practice, and it's from the Upanishads, and it says, what would a wise man or woman think or do now? So when you don't know what to do in a situation, when you don't know what to say, when you don't know what to think, just take a deep breath, get grounded, feel your feet on the ground, and ask yourself, and if you know of a, a wise a person you deem to be wise, you know, or whatever, a parent, friend, mentor, what would they think or do now? What would a wise man or woman think or say or do now? Ask that question. See what arises and follow that. That is a absolutely timeless key way to grow in wisdom because you're drawing on something other than just the chaos in the mind at the time. You're drawing on that and you're applying that. So try it and good luck because growing in wisdom rather than gathering more information is the way to connect with yourself and stay true to yourself. So next show is power of listening, the power of listening, and it leads on well from today's show. So join me for that one, the power of listening. And Let's talk about Damayanti. People ask me, what is Damayanti? What's it all about? Well, if you go to my website, damayanti.store, you'll find um, beautiful Sanskrit jewellery like the one I'm wearing today. I've got a pendant uh, with Sanskrit on it. This one says Satya, which means truth. Satya means truth. Um, and it's a beautiful, powerful reminder, energetic reminder. And also there's my uh website on the website there's a, a whole tab of being inspired there's the blog there's my show archive there and also you can get my book so go to my website dummyauntie.store and I'm on social media on Facebook Instagram and my shows are also on YouTube so it's been lovely to have you along I greatly appreciate your presence I greatly ap appreciate your love and care to hear this show and my offering to you is to hear these fine, beautiful sounds of Sanskrit to finish the show. And this is the prayer for all. May all be happy. May all be without disease. May all see only good auspicious things and none be in misery of any sort. May peace and peace and peace be everywhere. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve bhadrani pashantu ma kashchiddu kabhag bhavet om shanti shanti 
Shanti. Thank you for spending time with me on Damayanti, the show for your soul. To find out more about Damayanti or to get my book, Conscious Confidence, Use the Wisdom of Sanskrit to Find Clarity and Success, or to purchase my range of beautiful spiritual jewelry, go to my website, damayanti.store. That's damayanti.store. See you next time.